Your actions are to be based on the Word of God. Take the Word of God, take a Word of God that would apply to your life what God wants for you, apply it, and, and then simply do what God said. The will of God represents what got something new in your life. Growth, change, act on it. Don't just not only believe it, that's the first part, act on it. Sunday is not called Sunday in the Bible. It's called Yom Rishon. Try it. <clears throat> Yom Rishon. Yom means day. Yom Kippur, day of. Yom Rishon means the head or the first. The first day. So Sunday in Hebrew, in Israel, and in the Bible is called the first day. It's the day one. Day of the beginning is another way of translating it. Now think about this. The creation of the universe, the entire universe, began on Sunday. Now, we didn't call it Sunday then. It was, nobody called it Sunday. There was no sun and there were no days. But it was the first day, Yom Rishon, it was Sunday. Sunday is the day of the creation of the universe. And on what else happened on Sunday? Messiah rose from the dead on Sunday. Uh, or not Sunday, what's it called that? Yom Rishon, that's what he, the first day. Or the day of the beginning, no accident. He rose on the day of the beginning because it was the day of the beginning. The new beginning. Messiah, so Messiah rose on the same day that the universe was created. Not only that, he rose on a Hebrew holy day. A specific day comes only once a year. That's called Yom Reshit, the day of the first fruit, as many of you should know. The day when the first fruit of the harvest is lifted up to God, raised from the earth, presented to God, the first fruit. In Hebrew, the word for first fruit is Reshit. Try it. Reshit. It sounds similar. It's from the same root as Rishon. Rishon, Reshit. The first, the first fruit, it means the beginning. The word first fruit in Hebrew simply means the beginning or the first. It doesn't even say fruit in it. It means the beginning. So Messiah rose on the day of the beginning because it was the beginning. And he rose on the day, but because it was Sunday, Yom Rishon. And it was also Yom Rashit, which is the day of the first fruit. Now the mystery goes further because what is the very first word in the Bible? The very first word. <laughs> in, 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 in English, it, well, it's, it's, you read three words. In the beginning, correct? But in Hebrew, it's one word. And the word is, well, it starts with a bo because that means in, in the, but bereshit, reshit. So in the beginning, but it's the same word that means the first fruit. So in the beginning also means in the first fruit. Interesting because Messiah is the first fruit and it says everything was created in him. Now when the rabbis saw this <clears throat> and they had to come up with a Greek word for the Hebrew, which is what they did, and that's how we get their words used in the New Testament based on that, they had to come up with a word for that first word. So they came up with a word for reshit, first fruit, beginning. They came up with a word genesis or genesis. So the reason why the first book is called Genesis is because the first word is Reshit. And so the Orthodox Jews and observant Jews to this day and in Israel, they don't call the book Genesis, they call it Bereshit. They, it's called by the first, the beginning of it. Bereshit. So here, what this means is Messiah not only rose on Sunday, Rome, Yom Rishon, not only rose on the day, the holy day called the day of the Reshit, the first fruit, but also... That same word me is Genesis. He rose on the day of Genesis. That, now, now, an amazing thing because why? Because it's a, it's a new Genesis. It's a new universe. And it's a new creation. That's why. There's only two days that match up like that. Day one at the very beginning, in the beginning Sunday, and then Messiah, the new beginning. And so that day joins your life to this, on the day that you're, to the day you're born again, to be born again is to be given a new beginning, a new, a first fruit, a new genesis. So 
if Sunday in Hebrew is called Yom Rishon, it could also be called, every Sunday could be called the day of Genesis as well. So here we are on the first of the first, first Sunday, day of beginning, on the beginning of the year, God especially focuses in on the beginning. He focuses in on the first, the Reshit. In the Bible, the Reshit, the first fruit, is called holy. It especially belongs to God. God said to his people, dedicate the Reshit, the first fruit, to me. He, the first fruit of your, of your flocks, the first fruit of your fields, the first fruit of your blessings. That is even the principle of the time. We actually give the first fruit to God because we don't, most of us don't have fruits and flocks. We, it's converted to money. So we bless the Lord the same way we bless him and usually on the first day of the week. That's the principle of the time. But he could be said, dedicate the first fruit or this word also means dedicate the beginning to me. Not only the first fruit, dedicate the beginning, because the beginning especially belongs to God. The beginning of, the sto of a story determines the rest of the story. The beginning of an action determines the rest of the action. The beginning of a thought determines what's to come. That's why decisions are so important, because decisions represent the beginning of something new. Decisions are first fruits. That's why repentance is so powerful. Because repentance represents a chain saying, I'm not going with the old, I'm going with the new. So the repentance is always linked to new things. That's why don't ever look down on repentance. Don't, don't think repentance is a drag. So you repent. You know, people may use it like that. Repentance is something new. It's choosing the new, ending the old course, beginning the new. It's a first fruit. The, the word of God is the seed for the fruits that will come. Your actions are to be based on the Word of God. Take the Word of God, take a Word of God that would apply to your life what God wants for you, apply it, and, and then simply do what God said. The will of God represents what got something new in your life. Growth, change, act on it. Don't just not only believe it, that's the first part, act on it. It could be as simple as one command of one word that you have not obeyed yet. One thing that's still in your life that God said, put that away. One thing that's not in your life that God said, take it up. It'll become the first step of change of a new work that God is going to do. Abraham went. He left what was old because he went with the word of God. You need to do the same thing. Even today. Next one and next key. And this one, this man is known as Paul or Saul. Those were his two names. His life changed the world. But what was the first fruit that changed his life, that changed the world, that has even changed your life because you're reading so much of his words? Acts 9. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of God, went to the high priest and said, got letters for him to go to the synagogues of Damascus, that if any believer was found belonging to the way... Whether men or women, he might bring them back in chains to Jerusalem. Now as he was going, it happened that he was approaching Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And he fell to the ground, heard a voice saying, Shaul, Shaul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? And he said, Anochi Yeshua. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. They said, now, but get up, rise, and go into the city, and it will be told to you what you must now do. The men who traveled with him stood speechless. They, they hearing the voice, but not seeing anyone. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he couldn't see anything, and they led him by the hand. They brought him to Damascus. This was clearly day one of Paul's new life. Day one, all that God was going to do through Paul, which was amazing, was going to, is all hanging on this first fruit. God had a calling, but Saul had a part to do. What was that key? He had to get up, absolutely. For all the new things that God had for his life, Saul had to be willing to take that first step. Now, think about this for Saul. 
This means that every, what he was going to do to say yes to God and the new things is going to go against every single thing he's doing. It's going to be the actual opposite. What a radical thing. I mean, a lot of us, we came to the Lord, we had radical things to do, radical change. But this, here's the guy who's per, the greatest persecutor at that moment on planet earth. The greatest persecutor is going to become an apostle. And Saul knew it. He knew it because he said, I'm persecuting you. You're the Lord. I'm going to serve you. So what is it, the key that, that so changed Paul's life, so changed him, and that is a key for you for the new things God has? Because God had a plan for Paul from the moment he was conceived. Paul said, from my mother's womb, he called me to be an apostle. So, so for, but it had to be activated. God has plans for you. What is the thing? God has new things for you this year. And you have to be willing to step into what is new, even if it's different from everything you've known. Even if it's not comfortable, because most of the, if it's really new, it's probably not going to be comfortable. Even you might be afraid of it. It goes against what you do. It goes against what that, but that's the key. The more it goes against, the more powerful it's going to be. The more new it's going to be, the more it will produce new things. God said to Saul, get up, get up, and he did, and he went. Even though Saul knew this is the most radical thing he had, he could not even imagine. He could, oh, what am I doing? He could be like, I'm now going to be, what? If he thought about the ramification, now I, everybody back home, everybody in Jerusalem, oh, but what's going to happen now? But Paul knew, Saul knew, he says, if this is you, Lord, you're, you're, if you are Yeshua, I'm with you. So on this, on this day of new beginnings, be willing to step out of what you're comfortable with. If you want newness, you got to go, you got to accept newness. And even what you've known about yourself or thought about what you could do up this time. Do you think that Paul could easily have thought about himself being a disciple at that moment of Yeshua when he had just had dedicated his life to stamp it out? That's a big change. So you may think of yourself a certain way, but God says, I'm thinking of you another way. And I want you to do that and be radical, even if it, you, know, you might have been the most, you know, the most miserable person, the most depressed person. You're, you're saying, no, I am going to go the opposite now. I'm going the opposite. Even if I'm not used to it, I'm going the opposite. Maybe that's, I don't think about that as me, but God does. I, I'm, whatever, I'm, I'm, whatever, you, whatever that was, I'm going the opposite way, if that is the call. Okay, here's the next one. The prophet Elijah. This is the next first fruit, next day one. Prophet Elijah is walking past a field, 1 Kings 19. He departed from there. He found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, while he was plowing, with 12 yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the 12th. Elijah came over to him and threw his, his robe on top of him, his mantle on him. Then he left the oxen and began and ran after Elijah and said, please, let me kiss my father and my mother, then I will follow you. This was Elijah's Rishon, Elisha, his day of new beginnings. Everything else would begin here. And what was it that caused him to do it? What was it? He said, I'm going to leave. He said, I'm going to say goodbye to my father, my mother, I'm following you. Elisha felt the weight of the cloak. He felt the mantle on him. And he looked and he saw it was Elijah. Elijah must have been, they didn't have internet then, but they must have known, hey, this is Elijah, that's that guy. And he threw his cloak on me, this mantle on me. He knew what it represented. It represented, this is the calling of his life. The calling of God on his life, it was that that changed Elisha's life. It caused him to take the first step and be able to say goodbye to anything old. I'm going to leave anything old because of the calling. So with you. What God has for you, what is new for this year, is linked to your calling. It has to do with your mantle. Because God is, everything he calls you to is linked to your calling. That's the new step you want to take. The weight of your calling is what you want to go with. The hope of your calling, the height of your calling, the blessing and glory of your calling. That's what you, in other words, it's enough. God, what God has called me to is so much better than anything else in this world, anything I'm doing, that I'm going to go with it. Even, I'm going to go with it even if it is totally different from everything else because the calling, my calling is where I have to go. It is bigger and greater than anything that I'm doing if God's calling me there. That means I'm going to even go against my fears because the calling is greater. 
I'm going to go against the limitations of what has been because the calling is greater. I'm going to even be willing to leave the old behind because the calling is greater. I'm going to be able to leave this sin behind because my calling is bigger and better than that sin. Why should I let that sin stop my calling? I'd rather have my calling stop that sin. For the glory of the calling that God has. You say, well, what is it? What's my calling? You'll find out. But you got to go. You'll find out when you go. Elijah just didn't know. He didn't know. He just said, I'm going. When he went, he found out. You want to make that decision. See, over Elisha, everything was clothing. His, his thing began with that thing. And then at the end is when Elijah went up, he said, the, the, the cloak came down. And he said, I have the double portion. But he had to go. Then it came. Then it came. Take that on this day. Lord, I want, I, you have a calling for me. I'm going with it. I'm going to do whatever I have to do. Lastly, last key for before we go into God's presence. And for this, we go to the wilderness to an old man and a strange fire. Exodus 3. Now Moshe, Moses, was pasturing the flock of the father and his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the west side of the wilderness, came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Then the angel of God appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of the bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush wasn't being consumed. So Moses said, I must turn aside and see this, this wonder, this wonder of a sight. Why the bush isn't burning up? When the Lord saw that he turned to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moshe, Moshe. He said, here I am, Hineni. Same word that Isaiah says, Hineni. Same word that Mary said, by the way, Hineni, behold the, the maiden of the Lord. Then he said, do not come near here but remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. This is the Rishon of Moses. And all the beginning of all that's going to make possible, all that's going to come from Moses, through Moses, the one who would deliver an entire nation from slavery, who'd call down judgment on the world's greatest empire of the day, who'd perform miracles and wonders, even parting a sea, call down bre see bread from heaven, He'd receive and give the Ten Commandments, the law, and lead his people through the wilderness to the promised land. Amen. And he would begin the book that would be known to the world as the Bible. None of that would have been possible if it wasn't for this. This is the Rishon, the first fruit of Moses, the day of the beginning. And what does it reveal? What was it? that Moses had to do that made everything possible. God told him to do, he could have told him, you know, you know, go down, do great things, which he would tell them. He would tell them then, but the first thing wasn't that. You know, this, this, get ready, get ready to write, get ready to do this, get ready, all these things. It was something else that changed his life-changing thing. He said to Moses, take off your shoes. Take off your sandals. And Moses did. And that was it. If he had not taken off his shoes, he would not have set the Hebrews free. He would not have parted the water. He would not have received the Ten Commandments. He would not have led them to the Promised Land. That simple thing, take off your shoes. What does this reveal for your life? God has called you for many things and great things. But you can't do all those great things today. You can't do all the things God has for you to do this year today. You can't do it. But you, but you see here, you can't do it. But today you can do one thing. You can take the one step. You can take off your shoes. I'm not telling you, don't, don't start doing that. It's a symbol. It's okay. In other words, in, listen, it's okay if it's a small step, as long as it's a real step and a new step. You see, better than a great and mighty journey that you never take is a one small step of God that you do take. It's the first step that determines everything else. Even if that step is tiny, that first step is mighty. So it's better to take a small step than never to take a big step. Amen. If you have to cut your steps in halves or thirds or fourths, do it. But take the step. Take it. You know, sometimes you have to make it small so you actually just start doing it. The journey you have to complete begins with one step. The new things God has for you begins with one step. What God is calling for you this year begins with one step. 
Take that great thing. Some of you have an idea of what God's calling. You may not have all the details, but you know certain things from the Bible of what God called you. That's a great thing, a, a great you, a great ne greatness in prayer and in, in, in victory and doing God's will. Take the great thing and cut it up and get one step today. Today, see, that, the, all that God has for you will never reach you unless you've got a link today. You see, you know, you, it's like having a ladder that goes to heaven, but you don't have the first rings on there, you're never going to get there. You need a step today that's going to take you because it's what you can do here and now that's going to take you to there. If you never do the here and now, it's never going to go. If you never take the small, you'll never get to the great. That's a secret. Use it. Today is a day of, big, of new beginnings. One tiny step. One little puny tiny step of great things is better than a thousand large steps of a journey you're never going to see. One tiny step begins all the new things God has. Today is the day of new beginnings. Ask yourself, what is God calling me? If you may already know, what is God calling me to do? The higher ground, where he wants me to go. You know, greater, you know, time in prayer. Well, take, cut it up and take a little step of prayer right now. This is Jonathan Kahn. Thanks for watching. The Josiah Manifesto and all my books you can get anywhere, Amazon, wherever books are sold. Shalom.